them in the bottom right, starting us off as the blue Protoss player. This is going to be Lemon. Playing for Mystery Gaming, of course, and his opponent in the top left, the king of Asia, the absolute monster. Outside of Korea, there are very few, few players who can even take maps off him. In the top left, it is DKZ's Oliveira. As a non-American, I kind of want to say DKZ. How do you feel about that, Wardy? As a fellow proper English speaker? Definitely DKZ. Sorry. <laughs> we're, we're just... We're, we're just I... Cultural imperialism just has us. <laughs> There's no way I'm ever seeing DKZ. We actually talked about this yesterday. Me and Kat. It oh, was, really? Uh, yeah, we, well, we, not necessarily with DKZ, but with, like, uh, ZVZ being, like, Z vs Z or something. Ah, yeah, like, okay, so, yeah, ZVZ terrible. does sound wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like saying tuh for tuh for TVT, you know? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, let's not. <laughs> uh, the, the PP matchup for uh, Protoss vs Protoss, yes. Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, honestly, you know what's cool about this match is Lemon actually has statistically the best record against Oliveira of anyone in the region, having uh, won uh, against him <laughs> the only time they've played a best of three, historically. 100%... Um, uh, oh, actually, sorry, it was, it was one to one, so in, in series. But, you know, even in series, one in the Korean StarCraft League earlier this... Uh, well, it was literally yesterday. Um, and uh, and lost to him back in 2019, you know, which is which Lemon was coming up as a player. So the fact is, you know, Lemon's used up some tricky builds, caught Oliveira off guard. The question is, were though his his only surprise build orders? Does he have extra ones? You know, how does Oliveira adapt and react? And so far, double gas build, very safe opening, allows the Terran to get the momentum. But, uh, you know, I'm kind of regretting not doing my homework as a lazy caster. Didn't actually see what happened in those KSL matches. So I'm going to try and get those running in the background and hopefully have an update on you guys before the series is over or just afterwards on what happened there. Beautiful. Beautiful. Tell us, Pig. Figure it out for us. As we uh, do just <laughs> get set in this game with a uh, very safe play from Oliveira, by the way. That CC comes down pretty late. Everything's in the main base as well, so really not going anywhere in that regard. And just, uh, yeah, just just basically making sure that he's not going to be vulnerable to anything at all in the early stages. Meanwhile, Lemon, he starts up the Twilight Council, and we'll see just how aggressive he wants to be off of what is an expected blink opener over these next couple of moments. Another fast third command center open is so weird that this has taken over so much in this patch. Because the patch changes are, are definitely significant for the matchup, but I don't think they're significant enough to completely change the openings. Um, neither is like the Cyclone change nor the Widow Mine change. And yet we are seeing Terran players of all persuasions. Clem's been doing it against Max Max in Europe, Maru against Hero over in Korea and against uh, Beyond as well. Fast third command center. I just, I'm afraid of you, Protoss player. I want to go to three base before I dance. And I think a lot of the Protoss players have really been taking advantage of that by being quite greedy up to three base and beyond and getting more control and more time to respond. And I always feel like Protoss's weakness in this matchup is you know being on the back foot and just being a few seconds slow to respond to this or that so I, i'm really curious as like a test because you do need to be very high level to take advantage of this room terran gives you and to be fair he's still got harassment coming right it's it's actually sorry just a natural command center my brain is totally broken right now i apologize for that Wardy. i don't know why i'm looking at a command center in the main going that's a third command center because they're normally built on the natural <laughs> yeah i know it's um it, it, it we really just kind of build it quite far back in his base and everything like i was uh I've done that many a time, Pig, where you're like, and here's the third bit. Oh, no, it's, it's still just early in the game. Never mind. A uh, little drop comes in. We're going to run into the natural same time. Might actually be able to get a pro because everything kind of ran away. Okay, it turns back around. So the rib actually gets out alive. The wood of mine went off for a single probe in the main, but more, more than anything, everything gets away from Oliveira. So he gets to keep all of these units to harass with further or just to obviously kind of go back home and then grab one bigger, larger army and go all at once. You know, it's a great comparison yeah. to that previous game. We're seeing the tank and the Liberator, and this time I think we might actually see the Marine tank push, and then that Liberator going elsewhere at the same time. As you were mentioning then, that's where that Liberator could actually be much more effective. 100% Wardy. This is this is kind of what you expect when you see a Liberator in production. A much scarier move out, and he might set up an ambush in the middle of the map. Careful, Lemon. 
Got, don't want to lose these stalkers. Lemon is, is in a real spot above the start of the third Nexus and immediately sees uh, an army. Immortal does get Chrono, but with only three gate blink production, it's going to be hard to hold this off. Let's see what Lemon can pull out. This is a high pressure moment. Firefly is not giving him, uh, sorry, uh, Oliveira is not giving Lemon any room to breathe. Lemon has just a little bit of room to micro. Doesn't have any forward battery, but now he's in range of it and he has slowed this push down a fair bit. Good micro from Lemon so far. Yeah, forcing the siege up and just forcing Oliveira to, to kind of play it slowly. Gets in, gets the Liberator immediately. It was just trying to come with this army to reinforce the siege, but yeah, now we're going to have ourselves a setup from Oliveira. Does not look that strong. Only a handful of Marines. Uh, the Woodman goes down, so we can blink on top of these uh, tanks and get rid of them. We don't even need to. We're just going to wander on forwards wow. and get rid of everything, and the cleanup is made. Dude, that, he just wrecked that. That was incredibly well done. Like the methodical pulling back with the blink, the fighting in the overcharge. I mean, that was fantastic as far as holds go. And the third command center does go down behind this. And this isn't, uh, oh, I'm afraid and I'm turtling to 3cc, what I was starting to talk about earlier while completely misreading what was happening. This is, you have to go third command center after this sort of tank push because, you know, your second and third barracks is so delayed. This is just the transition you do. But it does mean if you don't kill their third or at least cause a ton of damage, you're sitting back for the next three to four minutes waiting for Stim to finish, you know, waiting for this third command center to pay off and all that sort of stuff. Oliver is stuck on the defensive. Firefly now has all the room in the world to go Robo Bay, Charge, Forge, and he's already thinking about a fourth base. And that's what I love. A lot of players, I feel like they win a fight like that and they go, oh, it's time to counterattack. Oh, I need to do this or that. But if you think about it, all Terran can do is sit and defend two base right now. He's not going to be open for you to do much damage unless it's a giant all in. And look at that, even catching the Liberator. Dude, this is just excellent play. Does lose a Stalker and a probe. Good focus fire from Oliveira to get the weak Stalker. But nonetheless, I feel like Lemon just has a, such a clean control and hold on what's going on so far. Yeah, and he's just he's just rolling with it too. Fourth base goes down. He moves into Colossus production. So he's fleshing out the advantage. He's now saying, cool, now I can move to my, you know, like I say, that fourth base. I can get my economy continuing to go. I can get the splash damage out, which is necessary in this matchup as well. And he's doing all of this safely because of the way in which he's controlled the earlier stages and won those fights. It's a long way for Stimpak and Combat Shields to be done from Oliveira, so he's really not going to have anything on the map for a little bit. By the time he's on the map, Lemon is going to be so well established. This is looking pretty rough for Oliveira. I mean, you gotta remember Oliveira maybe is the favorite player, so perhaps, you know, in the longer game he can still drag it back, but Lemon could not have given himself a better opportunity in these early stages. You know what I love to see here? Non-stop pro production and bonus little details to add to his position. Okay, I'll squeeze a battery in the main. I'll get one over at the fourth, but also let's get a ring of pylons for vision. Let's have the observer watching everything on the front. It feels to me like a lot of players freeze up and they get ahead against a favored player. Like, you know, an Oliver, you go, oh no. But Lemon's just playing a confident macro style. 72 probes, fifth base stars, double forge. I don't see this as being overly greedy. I see this as really towing the line of I'm ahead. I'm going to get further ahead. A triple robo. Oh, I'm a god. Classic style. <laughs> Just going super heavy on the robo. I love it. I think this is such a, a good way to play. You know, don't get me wrong. That The hero max pack style of one robo until 20 minutes and just use really good blink stalker micro and zealots running in and out that's a good style it's it's one of the best for a reason but the triple robo just packs so much explosive power good choice here nice ambush in the middle of the map as well baiting the stim out forces the tanks to siege and pulls back just slowing down Oliveira's push unfortunately does move his observer into scan range slight mistake for lemon but lemon's already slowed Oliveira down a lot yep lemon is uh I'm going to have Oliver just halted in the center, and anytime you're buying time, it's generally going to be good. Those robots finish, more units get out. Your defense is likely going to be looking stronger, and Oliver is backing it off as well. He's just going to say, okay, I'll step back here. As Lemon just takes a fifth base, there's been no slowing him down. I was about to say, Oliver almost feels like he needs some harassment on the map again. He is going to get two medivacs loaded up, and they move over to the right side. So that could be his opportunity. That could be his pot potential to finally get in and do some damage again, start pulling Lemon apart, and maybe you have the chance to start out playing Lemon a little bit more than what we've been seeing the last little bit. Four more gateways coming up. The disruptive production's good. I I've loved the Observer vision so far. I do want to see more Observers mixed in, because I feel like on a big map like Golden Ore, you do need to kind of track what's happening. Army skirmishing in the middle. Uh, it does look like cleaning up some Widow Mines. The army in the north is being annoying, and uh, that's actually, yeah, with Micro, Oliveira can definitely win this fight. He's got a fourth command center building on location, his two twos on the way as well. Stalkers do barely finish warping in there, and you've got to be careful once Stalkers are here as well. 
might be on a bit of a timer, as those medevacs, of course, can get jumped on. Oliveira dropping in the main would be uh, ballsy, to say the least, so he does just go to the dead space. And uh, so far, just a good way of keeping Lemon back. Lemon, double upgrades. He's not really got a massive amount of triple robo production used up yet. Just two Colossus, three Disruptors, but he's lost track of the army. Oh gosh, Lemon, he's lost yeah. map control here. And he doesn't realize this Terran army is sneaking up on his, his fifth base. He might have to give this Nexus up. Yeah, this, this was all this drop, man. First of all, Lemon had to pull back in general. And now he just, completely, like you said, completely lost map control. His fifth base, no opportunity to defend it at all. And now this map uh, position is going to work against him. Although the tanks do siege in range of a Colossal too. Oh. But they're actually going to be in range to fire back. I thought the Colossal might be able to do more. Disruptor shot will clean out some already used mines, and Oliveira continues to press into the natural expansion, finding pylons that are powering robos, denies the disruptor already. I mean, this is just the bio, the tanks are further back, remember, but it's still trading decently. Oliveira now maybe getting a little bit cornered in. Stalkers blink to make sure there's no retreat here, and this is where Lemon finally starts to look a little better as he gets the cleanup. I mean, Lemon was dominating this early game. There was a big mistake losing map control. The fact that he still crushed that army, it goes to show how good his setup was. Like, I mean, we're not gushing over his opening for no reason, guys. <laughs> He's still, after getting... This is like a huge screw-up positionally. He comes all the way back from the middle of the map, loses a ton of infrastructure and workers, still up 20 supply. He, he still just rebuilds the fifth, you know, warps in more zealots and, and continues. As long as he keeps going with, like, his upgrades and everything, you know, 3-2 on the way, double disruptor production, um, it's going to be very difficult for Oliveira to ever secure a fifth base in this game. The only thing is because he doesn't have that fifth mining and he hasn't taken that many extra gases, like you can't really go mass blink DT. And that would be such a killer move, which Oliveira just cannot afford to defend right now. But he's bought himself time, has Oliveira by doing that damage. But he can't be caught on the map. The stalker blink is really good. Lemon knows he's ahead on the army and jumping on top like that, taking out the medevacs is super good. Yeah, but he just knows fine well exactly what he can get away with. That's an empty medevac here and nothing gonna be really come about from it. A will run by top side onto the third base. We've also got this Widow Mine drop coming through here. Lemon is not watching this, so oh. game's getting a little busy. He knows it's late. He does lose six workers. Could have been worse. Help him get rid of a tank on the third. The wall off stopping the mineral line from being exposed. Lemon's still maxed out, though, and really on the verge of getting across the map and perhaps being able to kind of try and take a bigger fight again. But obviously, that is scary because you're going to be attacking into a defensive Terran setup. Only two tanks and three Vikings, though. I th I'm with you, Wardy. If he just pushes, I think it's game over. I don't think Oliveira can defend a push right now. That being said, hard for Lemon to know that. And we can see with time Oliveira leverage experience. But what does he need to do? He needs a second starport. He needs a fusion core. He needs range lives. He will need those. Otherwise, he will, you know, really struggle to deal with this position. For now, going out with this drop is honestly a wildly dangerous move. Oliveira right now, he's only got three medevacs. Like, he can't get this army out. So I, I, I really think this might be way too dangerous for him. Getting an Exus Cancel is good, but why is he attacking towards a Protoss with only part of his army? Yeah, I mean, it's just there's nothing else going on. He's pushing the bottom left, trying to deny that gold. Sure, great. I mean, that is something you want to get rid of, but he's got to be super careful with the rest of this. Now he's getting jumped on again, so there's no retreat in here because the, the medevacs problem. will go down, so... Yeah, Lemon just has the ability to jump in and make dives like that, and that's going to help him a lot as he's going to clean everything up there. I mean, don't get me wrong. He does deny an Exus on the top, gets an Exus and 10 probes on the bottom. Like, he's trading okay, but you can imagine if Lemon's just a little bit quicker with his positioning, he stomps on that army before he even gets on the Nexus. Like, Oliveira is playing a little fast and loose. If he can use this map control to secure his own fifth base, continue his upgrades, get to range lives, don't get me wrong, he, he could definitely win this game but he's doing it in a dangerous manner. And that just shows how much pressure Lemon is putting on top of him. Like Lemon's saying, you know, he's in such a monstrous economic lead from the early game. It feels like Oliveira has to make something happen and a rotation to the left could be huge here. Disruptors are dodged. Oliveira's looked very clean so far. Another shot does take down a Widow Mine. Yep, Widow Mine. Over get scanned. Getting cleaned up. We see the army of Lemon coming back over. The right hand side, Widow Mine. It's picked off, the rest of the army gets chased up. Stalkers are blinking in after Vikings, and there's another disruptor shot firing through, gets rid of another mine as well. This army really does want to battle its way up. Lemon now in the aggressive position pick, feeling as though he might be able to get something out of this. He's got warpins coming from the center of the map as well, so he is very ready to send this. Dude, Oliveira's fifth is so greedy, I don't think Lemon even knows about it. Okay, he splits yeah. a unit off, yeah. That's a free planetary if he decides to go up there. 
but I don't mind him just poking forward first and breaking these rocks. There's only one tank. So don't overestimate what one tank can do, you know? <laughs> That's a maxed army. Two disruptors just in its face, just drop their shots and say, nah, -uh. Oliveira's looking for this round. I don't think he has the meat and potatoes to do this. Three, two is done for Protoss. So it's not like there's a big upgrade advantage for Terran. Disruptor shots on all sides. Oliveira's flank gets absolutely <laughs> purified. And that is disgusting, man. Dude, it's, it's weaponized Tide Pods all over the face of Terran. Oliveira's army is getting absolutely trounced. He's been on the back foot from start to finish, and Lemon is showing he's a proper macro Protoss. He really is. He's kept control of this game. He has been able to take proper fights. I mean, that was a difficult fight to take, right? You got disruptor in different directions, control them, hit them, and he manages to hit pretty much every single one. Oliveira loads up. He realizes it's desperation time. He's moving across the map with the whole army. But I mean, in turn, a base trade against Protoss, he will have recall available and he gets the you know head start and being able to trade out a base or so. That doesn't seem like it's it for Oliveira. He's going to knock down the pylon, maybe some reinforcements, but I mean, he's really just buying time. But buying time for what? Exactly. That's the perfect question, Wardy. Buying time for what is, is, is the best way you can put it. He's not got ranged lips. He's not got a lot of Vikings to deal with the Colossus. It's only been two Colossus the whole time anyway. So even if he gets like eight Vikings, that's almost an overcommitment. The disruptors are just as big of a concern. But I mean, I, I'm just looking at the, the lost unit count. There's like four tanks, three Vikings, two libs, all these ghosts and marauders and marines. Only three disruptors have died this game. The robo unit retention has been fantastic for, for Lemon. And, and it feels like, you know, when life gives you lemon, make lemonade. Oliver is trying to do that, but it's pretty sour, man. He doesn't have a lot of sugar to sweeten this, but he does get on top of the disruptors a little bit. They're all empty. Those were some great dodges. I just don't think he has the numbers to push through. I don't think he does at all. I think it was definitely one of the better fights Oliver could have taken, but again, he needed more reinforcements. He needed more numbers. And Lemon is absolutely winning that numbers game as he presses on in and cleans out a Widow Miner too. They're going to be back on top of this location. I mean, again, just disruptors keep on firing. And at this point, Oliveira can't afford to keep bleeding out like this. That cannot happen again and again and again and again with the way that Oliveira is set up. And Lemon is able to take game number one off of Oliveira. And today, takes a little bit of an interesting turn already. Uh, interesting number we didn't really weigh in on. I'm not sure if Marpu was like purposely showing it on stream or not, but it was uh, up there. I just noticed at the very end, his 24th warp gate was morphing just as that game finished. Um, <laughs> I'm not exaggerating when I said proper macro Protoss. Lemon just went Rainer style in the, in the late game. That was insane. I was like, man, feels like a lot of Protoss is dying in this fight. Why is his supply still so high? Oh, he's warping in 20 zealots at a time. That's why. Okay. <laughs> Lemon really, like when he got the advantage, you know, I was like, oh, I, I, I basically was like, this is a story I've seen so many times underdog player they play a really good clean early game looks great they get out of position just from a little drop catch like being annoying and then like the game falls apart but he came back cleaned that up immediately re-expanded and just did not miss a beat on everything he needed to do at no point did i get the feeling like lemon was tunnel visioning on any one area of the game and that's what you need to be a proper macro player so really really solid play I i'm very impressed by that game one yeah, no, he, he controlled, you know, it's not like he just got gifted a lead early, like he had to find the cleanup on that attack, it was not an easy attack to defend, he got that defense, and once that defense was made, he really made sure to not let it slip, there was that one moment he got pulled back by the double drop, lost map control, Oliveira got the fifth base, that was the one moment it really felt like Lemon slept, anything slip in that game, otherwise he was really on top of it, took good fights, took decisive moves as well, like oftentimes blinking on top of medivacs, playing the cleanup, and just punishing Oliveira for being a little bit too active on the map, so... Yeah, very well earned game one victory. Lemon takes the advantage over Oliveira. And definitely on the way to causing a little bit of a cheeky upset here right now. As we get ready for game two on Oceanborn. So, let's see what Oliveira has planned to try and even this series out and to wrap this up. Dude, that's, I mean, it's just, it's, it's cool as well. Seeing that, like, you know, technically they're one-to-one -one in best of threes. But Oliveira beat him in Terran vs. Erg, you know. He won. <laughs> he won yesterday in KSL. He won the PVT then two-to-one against Oliveira. He's now one game up. It's like... Okay, Lemon, is Lemon just really, really good at PVT right now? Does he have his number? Like, what is going on? You know, I've been hunting through videos uh, in the background as well, and I I'm not sure if anyone actually cast it live. I'll have to go look through the replay pack myself to find exactly what happened in those games versus Oliveira, because I found some of Lemon's other games, but not the, the ones from the KSL. So uh, that's going to have to be something I update everyone on in the audience at a later date. But uh, I'm, I'm excited, mate. This is a really good start to the series for him, and uh, great things could potentially be here, especially when 2 0 would be such a crazy start. I would be absolutely wild as fighting to not let that happen in the top left. The Red Terran player from Dragon Kaiser Gaming is indeed Oliveira.
And in the bottom right side, he's been a bit sour for the Terran today. Honestly, just amazing early game defense, setting himself up for success and carrying it forwards with poise. It's Lemon. That's a simple name. You know, I, I kind of like the simple names. Like, I, I've always felt there are some names that are a bit iffy, but um, I find like a lot of the, the names, I, it, I, I, I think we should have more fruit related names. Like, I always like, you know, Jigua, Watermelon, which I'm sure I'm butchering the pronunciation of that. Um, lemon. I don't know. There's something there's something simple and nice about a fruit name. Well, if, if you could go back and name yourself something different, Wardy, something cool rather than just your name, what would you do? Well, I don't, I don't know for myself. But I was just thinking, imagine someone called like Banana won the World Championship. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Banana! Oh, yo, World Champion! Banana! <laughs> 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 that would be so much fun, man. There'd be so many, like, fruit-related dumb jokes and lines People we could use, People would just, like, you know? literally have bananas in the crowd. I'd love it. <laughs> His ceremony, every time he wins, he just peels a banana on stage and, like, smashes it. <laughs> uh... When his opponents win, they throw a banana on the floor and step on it. Uh, it'd be good times, man. <laughs> yeah. Oliveira's going to go one racks expand. This is a, a bit more traditional rather than the, the aggressive opening from the previous game. Yep. He's getting himself that expansion up, getting that CC down. Uh, a little bit less kind of safe, right? Because you're just going to get the CC down immediately. It's on the low ground. You don't have the factory beforehand to get the units out already. But as you say, it also just sets you up without the need to maybe apply as much pressure. So that is a benefit seen here as well. You just have this Reaper heading down at the bottom right, and Oliver is about to start scouting, about to start trying to pick off a probe or so, about to start trying to take control of this early game. Good adept positioning there. Reaper's got to back off to be careful. Second barracks is very early. This is the this is the the, the, the Chinese build, man. The Chinese TVP build is the quick second barracks after factory. It's what Oliver used to win his world championship. He did this a lot in TVP. Back in Katowice that year. Um, and, and it's a good build order because it just gives you so much stuff. There are some scary attacks that can come off it. It also makes you relatively immune to things like four gate blink pressure because you will have such a, a well-timed stim and just extra fighting units in the early game. And you can still turn it into a macro build. You don't have to do a two base timing. It just leads itself into incredibly strong two base timing. So I'm really keen to see it. I, I remember Coffee was the guy who used to spam this out in, uh, in the Chinese region mm -hmm. back in the day was so many two and three racks before starport builds and indeed that third barracks is going down so we're going to be seeing an immense amount of early bio gary to deal with for lemon lemon's adept has had some good scouting these marines walking all the way across the map this is a dangerous move what yeah. is he just going to try and overwhelm the stalker and get kills i mean it looks like it the reaper is going to grenade the stalker the stalker goes backwards a couple of probes will pull and so we will get ourselves a couple of kills here one probe two probe we're going to get three and Stalker had to play afraid, lost its shields early, and yeah, we're just missing the extra unit to really make this a simple defense. Now, four probes go down. Oliveira early game is going to make up work. Gets an adept as well with the Cyclone, so not bad pressure. I mean, it's it's these cute little things I always say, you know, if you can catch a Protoss off guard, it's there's these narrow little windows of like, he's like, oh, no, no, I only need one adept into one Stalker. Like, that's fine. I can go straight for a third Nexus. And it's like, wait a second, can you? What if I sneak these three Marines around in adept with a Reaper? And if Lemon didn't react so quickly with the Stalker, if you bounce the Stalker with the gr first grenade towards the Marines, like that Stalker might just die very quickly as well. So you could kind of see the, the little details there, the mistakes that Oliveira was digging for and trying to force out of his opponent. He's now going for a giant three ranks Marine tank timing. A second tank's going to start up now, and he's going to push with the second tank most likely. Maybe wait for the third one. Uh, stopping that off two gate blink is... Um, poof. Let's just say his, his hold was impressive last game, but he'll have to do something even more impressive this game. If, if Oliveira commits to the two tank move out, which you normally do with this build, there's going to be so many Marines and tanks, probably a few SCVs for repair, and that can be really hard to stop when you've only got a couple Stalkers. That being said, third and fourth gateway goes down for Lemon. He does have a vision with the Observer, which will give him warning of what's going on. So he, he's going to see him move out. Yeah, he knows. And <laughs> now he definitely knows as the Observer goes down, so... That's going to be caught. The upgrades are going to be done. Extra gateways coming online here. The Stalkers are going to try in their very low numbers to move forward and to try and force a siege up, trying to slow this down at least a little bit. Uh, Reaper taking a shot or two. The Cyclone there to fight back. And this army continues to press on forwards. A couple of SCVs already coming in. 
Stalkers continue to back it up. And the army about to arrive on that third base. No mortal out just yet. It's just Blink Stalkers. One of them already goes down. The shield battery started really late. He took quite a few seconds after seeing his observer scan to start it, and that's going to punish him. If he had a battery overcharge already, he could have fought a bit further out. But as it is, Lamin is going to have to give up this third base, and that is very tough. As I said, the hold in the previous game was impressive, but defending this army is so difficult. I mean, remember, we all remember Hero being a massive favorite against Oliveira in that semifinals and crumbling to these sorts of pushes time and again. It's such a vicious stim timing. Look at the numbers. How do you stop that with a handful of Stalkers and an Immortal? The answer is you do not. Oliveira going back to his best build order, the old tried, tested and true, and he gets a crisp game two comeback victory. Yep, he shows us what's up, man. He's just like, hey, no, no, no. <laughs> Lemon, that was cool game one. You played well, but, you know, let's actually see how my aggression does against you. Let's see if you can hold this. And, and Lemon could not hold it. So Oliveira does indeed, as you say, bring this back to 1-1. One, one. And we are going to be going to game number three to decide this series on Ghost River Pig. What are you thinking about this new map? Because this is the map I'm still kind of a bit more kind of undecided on in this new map pool out of all the maps. This one I'm not quite sold on yet. What are your thoughts on it? Um, I've been playing a lot of Zerg. I've played a lot of games my first week on this map. I was like, this map's so awkward. Oh my gosh, I can only expand in one direction and the push pit path is so close and it's just, it feels weird. And I actually really enjoy playing on it now after a little bit more practice. And I'm going, oh, I kind of like this. And I, I'm not sure what it is. There's just something about the, the different kind of engagement patterns on it and stuff and how you do both kind of expand and meet in the kind of bottom center of the map in the late game or over those middle paths in the mid game. Um, it's definitely a map with a short push path. There, there is, you know, the big drop angle just straight into the natural that gets there so quickly. There's some nice tank pushes behind the rocks in this matchup where you can elevate. Uh, I, I really haven't watched enough TVP to have a super tight hold on it, but I think you add that kind of short distance between the players. You combine that with, I mean, a lemon that looks great in a macro game and an Oliveira that looks like he wants to punish it and not really give him too much room to breathe after that game one. And, and it does feel to me like it's going to be a question of like lemon probably wants to go four gate blink or something or at least three gate blink i think to have extra safety i think if he goes two gate blink robo again we might see him crumble to another vicious timing it'll probably be a different setup for Oliveira, but i do think he's probably going to take the fight to him at latest say with stim and shields finishing with the kind of standard medevac bio multi-prong around eight minutes at the latest i think lemon's really gonna have to fight for his life yeah Yep, uh, looks as though we got set up on the wrong server, so maybe a moment or two. But, um, you know, I think, um, I think it's one of those things, or one of those ideas, right, where a lot of the time you have these players who, like, a lemon looks really good in a macro game, but then he needs the start to be able to feel comfortable, right? And that's, like, what separates him from being one of the very best still versus, like, just a very strong player. And that's why Oliveira's like, hey, you know what, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna be aggressive, I'm gonna try and you know, take these fights, and I'm going to try and throw you off your game, and it's how you deal with that that really kind of, you know, sets you apart there, so, yeah, we will uh, get into this game number three in a second, looks though like we were on the right server, just uh, waiting for one of our uh, people to, well, one of our players to relog, and we'll be off and away, yeah. and, um, yeah, but I, I think it's going to be tough for Lemon, because I think Oliver will know to get in there, try and disrupt, and Lemon has to kind of get through that point to get to the stage where we've seen him be the best. Well, that's what's been weird in, in this patch because it was meant to target TVP in certain ways and obviously all the discussions around that, but it felt like from day one, the Terrans were playing completely different TVP. Like, and I was like, why are you guys changing builds? Why are we giving so much room? You know, there's so much defensive three commands in a play from everywhere. And I'm like, why are we letting Protoss get to four base for free and, and disruptors? I'm like, it used to be really hard to do that. Why are we letting that happen? I'm like, you know, and you know, there's stuff that happens on the high level ladder that you don't always see as a caster because it gets like within two or three days, people are like, no, no, we've got to change the build to this because of this. And then they go back within a few days and like, but the meta develops so quickly on a new map pool um, that we have been kind of left in the wake. But we, we saw it, for instance, in GSL, right? Group stage, Hero, Trounced, Beyond, and Maru in the group stage. Later on, we saw those same Terran players switch their TVP style and be way more aggressive versus their Protoss opponents and really be like, okay, let's not let's not just let the Protoss get three bases and then jump on us with Storm and charge lots or macro to four bases and beyond. So I think we're seeing that same thing here where obviously it's not like Oliveira played uh, super defensive in game one. This is, this is obviously he's just like, yeah, that timing didn't work out. Let's switch it up. Let's make sure we don't delay Stim and Shields too long in game two. Hit like a brick. It's another map for good pushing paths. 
and we'll see what he can find out. Will Lemon go for the, the, the early robo? You know, something like the Observer first that Firefly went for? That's something I would be tempted to do if I was in his circumstance. Either that or something with a lot of safety baked in, like a four gate blink. Well, let's find out as we set up into it. There's going to be map number three here on Ghost River. In the top left corner is going to be our red Terran player from Dragon Kaiser Gaming. Bringing it back clean and crisply in that game number two, it's Oliveira. And the underdog player who's already impressed us, but did crumble a little bit in the last game, though everybody has crumbled to that push in the past. It is Mystery Gaming's Lemon. I, um, yeah, I, I really feel like this map is uh, uncharted territory in terms of the many different builds the players can do for TVP. We, we've got to see so much more on these maps to, to figure out exactly where the players will be going. I mean, it felt like that the GSL matches in the top four were just chaos from start to finish. <laughs> and no surprises, really, when you've got those those particular players playing PVT, like just, just wildly all over the place in terms of the movement and the back and forth and Protoss is ahead, now Terran is ahead. Um, definitely, though, with that Rainer style of, of PVT, like we said, get ahead and then make a billion gateways and lots of bases and just really, really use that production. Lemon will be looking to ascertain what is happening and then react to it. And double gas, usually something you want to choose a safer option against. Yeah, that's um, that's very true. The pressure will build up here from Oliveira. He will be able to get feisty early on. So do something that's not going to kind of leave you vulnerable to that. Make sure that's baked into your build order here get you through to that uh, stage nice and comfortably as the probe goes to double lap the SCV for just a couple of moments. You know, the SCV coming across and obviously this is just Lemon trying to figure out what's going on. Obviously confirms the factory is indeed in the base as well just in case and at home he gets his pile on the low ground so he can set up a battery there as well if needed to give himself that opportunity. The probe got pushed back without the SCV going down as well which is nice. Yeah, not, not too annoying. It's not one of those probes at the very start of the game that like forces you to build your barracks out of position and is just running circles, just zapping the whole time and needs an SCV escort or anything like that. Reaper's going to come over across the map and the Adept first to bounce it away. We haven't seen any Stargate play for Lemon. That may be a, a strategic weakness if he's not feeling confident with Stargate play. I do think there's like um, builds that you you sometimes feel like, oh, I can't do this. If they, if they go Phoenix, it'll be really bad. But if you know your opponent never plays Phoenix, always plays Blink, it gives you an advantage in the, the build picking phase as the Terran. And, and seeing once again, you know, three games in a row, Twilight, definitely that is something that is available to Oliveira. That does not look like it's a proper Reaper Warloff, does it? But <laughs> apparently it is. Uh, I stopped judging Warloffs a while ago, man. Sometimes I'm like, surely that's a Warloff. And then something walks through and then I'm like, no <laughs> way, and just gets stuck. So, yeah. Sometimes wall off. The moment there's any sort of like diagonal involved. Yeah, stuff yeah, just gets exactly. Weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's very true. As uh, yeah, the reaper definitely does not seem like he can get in. Obviously, just trying to poke up, but not really having too much success. As, uh, just kind of keep on. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think he's thinking the same thing we are. He's like, surely I can get up there, right? <laughs> he believed, man. He believed. Well, uh, Ollie is going for a medevac. And we are seeing uh, so far two gate blink robo. This can still turn into a uh, four gate and the third gate does go down, which bakes in a bit of safety without going too hard. I've actually really enjoyed like some of the three gate blinks that Max Pax and a few other players have done recently. So, you know, because you can still be quite aggressive with three gate blink. We're like, well, that's it's four gate is aggressive and three gate is just defensive. And it's like, no, not really. Three gate is both. It can be defensive and offensive. It's it's just the, the more balanced. It's not as extreme one way or the other. Um, Nightmare actually did some really good three gate blinks first. Clem last week in the weekly cup. He looked fantastic with that build. Oh, this drop just snaking nice. through the, the little hole in the fog of war. What a great position as well, because now you got on top of the ramp with the mine. That means you got to give something up just to access oh. the base. So the adept goes down immediately. Now these Marines are still chasing a stalker already. We get three probes from lost mine time. We get out of very minimal losses. This really is just nice for Oliveira. Gets in, gets some damage done. Doesn't have to be overly committed, and once again, Pig, we've seen those tanks, seen that Liberator. This is kind of what went wrong in that first game, but uh, he's already started off well with a bit of pressure here, so we'll see if he can follow through with some aggression. As that tank in the moment, just sieging up in the main base. Yeah, it feels like a more defensive version of it, though, um, because he's already, you know, gone for that drop and so on. Just in that, 
even though there's a bunker, like the second and third barracks is already down. So he, I think Oliveira is going to fake the push, maybe move out, but I don't think he's going to commit crazy hard. This is like, you know, it, it was he was like, I need to do damage in game one with the tank push. This time, I think it's going to be more of a poking, get the lib in the main. Lib getting scouted is a problem. That's, uh, you know, you should be very ready for that now as Lemon, now that you know it's coming. Third Nexus does start. It's three gate plus Immortals already building. Oh, and I love this Stalker move. That's great. Mm-hmm. Trying to catch this Liberator. Going to get a few shots on it. It's going to be low. It is going to be just about alive, and it will send the dead airspace, but not exactly ideal. Stalker cannot reach it there, and so the Liberator will just chill and, I guess, be a threat. At least it means that you've got to keep in mind that that is there. Otherwise, if you forget about it, it could still get a worker or two or get away and get repaired. So there's a chance for the Liberator. Second life given to it as Oliveira slowly starting up those bio upgrades. Stim plus one now on the way. Well, Lemon will have some time to get set up. He's getting his charge coming through, his extra gate, and the Nexus, obviously, as well, including the Forge. Everyone's looking to kind of just move on through to the mid game at this point. Forge is almost finished. We got charge started up. Three more gateways are building, so six gate coming up. Yeah, this is a pretty good setup for Lemon. I mean, the great thing is the Observer sees no third command center. At this point, you're pretty certain, like technically there could be one maybe in the bottom left of the base, but you, with everything you see, you're like, no, no, no. I just got to deal with the two base push. And, and what a streamlined way to deal with it. Look, I'll get the forge so I have some progression to my army, not to mention immortals and sentries, which adds some, some real staying power, right? But essentially I'm just massing zealots from here. And if I can shut this push down, that's going to be it. Now, Oliveira has less information. He might not realize, oh, you know about this. Um, your Observer sees everything. I probably shouldn't actually commit too hard to this push. Like, I should probably build the command center on location, look for damage, but don't overcommit here, you know? And, and his army actually doesn't have them, that many marines in it. Like, zealots are so dangerous against this if they can get on top of the siege tanks. It's an eight marine drop to distract, a liberator that's already been shut down, and already this force field ambush is deadly. Olivara moves into the ambush. And, oh, you know what? Saving the tank, slick micro by Ollie. That could have been so much worse for him. He actually... I mean, life gives you lemons. He makes lemonade out of that one for sure. That should have been a disaster. And he's actually way ahead on the units lost. That's actually wild, right? I mean, lemons ambush, ambushed himself somehow. I don't, I don't know how that works. I don't know why. But apparently that's the result there is that Libra is going to relocate. It's going to go elsewhere. Now we recall into the main base. So there's a single medevac. This gives the lip maybe a chance to siege this natural. And Olivera starts to be everywhere. And of course, at some point, he might even still try and move that army further forwards again. Three probes go down. Now the Stalkers will get in there to clean up that lid, but that means, again, everything is pulled back. And so here we go. The army oh. moving forwards from Oliveira, and he's in the middle of the map already. Dude, this, this army gets across the map so quickly here. That's what you got to be careful of on this one. Third Command Center is already almost finished behind this as well, so he doesn't need to win the game right now. There's, it's just Stalkers. It's a low-tier army for Lemon. Lemon needs a flank on this. He needs to crush this army, but he's coming from a slightly awkward angle on the right with those rocks in between him. Uh, the bio is going to come around. He's got Guardian Shield. The Zealot and the Stalker in the south are very far away. They're going to try to come in now. He's going for it. Here we go. Lemon's going to try to break this army. The Widow Mine's getting some big splashes on the Zealots, but a couple of the tanks are already going down. Immortals laying down some damage on the exposed two tanks. The one tank in the back does a lot of damage, as does the bio. It's just Stalker sentries and Immortals trying to chase down. He does blink to chase down one of the Medivacs. Good move here for Lemon, but Oliveira sieging a lib, stimming more units. He's got Widow Mines to fall back on. The blink forward is super decisive. Lemon feeling confident right now, and with good reason. Ah, that change on the Observer as well, mate. We finally see it in a pro match. The Observer does not die to Widow Mine's Flash anymore. 10 extra hit points makes a world of difference. Yep, he gets to live. The Ops gets to sit out the front, and Oliveira unsuccessful on this push. Lemon gets the cleanup, is on his way to base number four, while Oliveira still has to figure out moving his own third base across. So looking to work on that in the next moment or two. Oliveira just scanned, but didn't catch anything. This Observer now moving away as it uh, realizes it might be being hunted. And, uh, yeah, this is, uh, again, good cleanup for Lemon, and suddenly he kind of start having vibes from that game one, right? He gets a defense, he gets to start macroing up a little bit. It's maybe not as decisive as that game one, but it's definitely got, like I say, that kind of vibe. And now, we're actually going to see him in the middle of the map. He's going to catch these units again. He's been very decisive with these engagements. He's been immediately ready to blink through and all the rest of it, so he's had no hesitation about that. 
and it's it's so good. This is what I was saying about him playing dangerous Oliveira in game one. Is like when your opponent's doing this, like getting out here is dangerous, but he's gonna try and turn it into a trap as he comes down with the rest of his force. Have these immortals chased too far? The answer I think is yes. That's a damaged bio army. He has to fight. I don't think you can run because concussive shells here. A few zealots do come in. Uh, as those zealots come in, maybe he can turn this into a, a, a kind of safety force and, and actually retreat off the map. Both sides back away with a bit more respect for each other. Remember, three immortals never died in game one. They just kept trading. This time, one of the immortals goes down. The other two are still looking healthy. Disruptors have started the fourth base. Get a scan. Oliveira goes, oh, crud. He does have a fourth. That's got to feel awkward. You know, that's not going to feel great for me. He splits a double drop off on the south while he tries to focus on a defensive setup at home. The Observer goes in for Lemon, though. He might just dive. That is a tiny Terran army. There is nothing there, man. Nope. There is uh, really nothing at all. A couple of mines uh, are going to be the, the safety net at the moment. And man, Oliveira really doesn't have much here at all. Lemon showing up on this third base. Going to knock down these couple of mines. Widow mines firing through. And we are just going to keep on going. I mean, the mines are gone. This third base is in a lot of trouble. We are dropping across the map at the same time. The SCVs pull in here. Lemon needs to decide, does he want to finish off the base or fight the army? He's going to fight the army. Disruptor shot was flanking in. The Zealots are kind of figuring out what they're doing. We've already killed 23 SCVs. Oliveira is going to probably deny the fourth base. He loses the third CC at the same time, though. And now you're going to get Dude, to recall on the fourth the base. Yeah, he's not. Not even. Wow. He F2'd at home. In, in panic in that defense, he F2'd this drop home, delayed it by a good 10, 15 seconds. You know, it was, it was a really, it, it was a bad situation either way. Oh, no. I was in the dead space. Even that full medevac goes down. Dude, Lemon is just playing some absolutely sweet StarCraft today. He is looking fantastic. I, I, I am just amazed. It's so decisive. Oh it's so all controlling. And Lemon, 